It's about time to look at a timepiece a bit bigger than the wristwatches we saw before. Mark Phillips found it on the other side of the Atlantic. Big Ben has chimed out the hours for 156 years, or has it? What is probably the world's most famous clock has not only been the heartbeat of London. BBC News at six o'clock. The House of Lords is about to be. Through the BBC's radio broadcasts, it's arguably been the way the world has kept time. Big Ben has now been set to Greenwich Mean Time. British summertime ended a week ago. But it turns out Big Ben's reputation for reliability has taken a bit of a hit. Frankly, the thing has always been a little temperamental. The ancient clockwork may be a charming example of Victorian engineering, but it's never been particularly accurate. The clock always speeds up or slows down a little according to the temperature. And people like Ian Westworth, who maintain the clock, have literally had time on or in their hands. He's been using coins to adjust the clock, and he's got it down to a science. Putting on or taking off a penny on the pendulum like this, you speed up or slow down the clock by two-fifths of a second in 24 hours. But lately, fractions of a second haven't been the problem. Last summer, Big Ben was a whole six seconds out of whack. It's crunch time for Big Ben. A special committee studying the clock is considering whether the whole thing is so clapped out it needs to be shut down and rebuilt, a process that could take years. It's even been suggested the 14-foot-long minute hands may be ready to fall off because their bearings are shot. But stopping the clock, says newspaper columnist Quentin Letts, would be like stopping London itself. It's not necessarily tradition, it's deeper than that. This is really, this is the marrow in our bones, this old clock. One clock. One clock, and you know, uh, the, the thought of it not being there or one hand flying off or, heaven forbid, the thing going digital is just too <laughs> gruesome to consider. What's worse, the prospect of losing Big Ben comes at a time when many of the famous symbols of old London seem to be disappearing. The much-loved hop-on, hop-off buses are gone to be replaced by these unloved models. The old red phone boxes are only kept around for the tourists since the advent of you-know-what. And London's famous black cabs are now threatened by Uber. Yet something's got to be done. The thing may stop itself if it isn't fixed. They're actually running out of time. And the tower it sits in is in need of urgent repair as well. Unlike the buses, though, in Big Ben's case, you have to think they'll find a way. Well, I think the, Brit the British people have always been very romantically attached to the great symbols of the past. We cherish things. We're a small place. So we have to get used to making do with the old because there isn't space to build the new. But it's such a beautiful thing. I think that it's legitimately worshipped because it's not just to do with the old. It's the fact it's a really dinky, dainty looking thing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I... Pity if it weren't there. It would be wonderful if it were uh, kept. It would be a disaster if it goes. 